Hey, this is Miss Taylor today. I'm so glad to see you all. I'm going to teach you about poetry. Are you excited about that? Yay! Who's written a poem in the class? Oh, great! I see several of you have. If you haven't, no worries, because you know what? It's pretty easy to learn. I will teach you. Today, what we are looking at, though, is rhyming poetry as compared to non-rhyming poetry. So most of us like rhyme. We like that sing-song sound in our brain. It's just easier to memorize. It's more pleasant. But you can get some really deep imagery and feelings evoked with non-rhyming poetry as well. So I'm going to teach you guys to write both. I'm excited about our course. Who's excited? Raise your hand. Yeah, good. And I look forward to hearing and letting you share your poems with all of us. And there are so many markets online now that I'm sure we can find some markets for your poetry to be published so the whole world can read them. Would you like that? Yeah, good, good. What, Janine? You've already had one published? Oh, good. You're going to have to tell us the website so we can look it up. That'll be great. That'll be great. Okay, let's get, let's get to the lesson. So we have four lines from a poem I wrote a few years ago that does not rhyme and four lines from the opening of another poem I wrote that does rhyme. So I like water. Water speaks to me in volumes, oceans, so to speak, waterfalls. And so I write a lot about water. So this is what these two poems are about. Two different poems, excerpts, which means just a part of, or a few lines from, two different poems. So the first one does not rhyme. Now, the thing about rhyme is it's usually the last word on the, on the poem in the poem that rhymes. There are internal rhymes that we'll talk about in another class, with, which means in other words, and there's uh, English tools like alliteration and things like that we'll discuss later. I bet. Who knows what alliteration means? <sighs> Ashley. Yes, repeating the first sounds in, in many words. That's right. Good, good, good job. Smart, smart. Of course I have smart students. I'm going to help you enjoy poetry even more too, okay? In the desert of my soul, your smile is rain. What? David, you want to read? You can read. Thank you. I'm proud of you for wanting to read. I'm so proud. It's so important to be able to read and to read in front of the class and in front of people. Good. You'll get that opportunity. Just right now, let me read to the class and I'll give you a few points and then we'll do some other stuff, okay? All right, you will get to read from the class. All of you can. I would like all of you to create a poem and read for me later, okay? All right, let's do this. In the desert of my soul, your smile is rain. Your laughter a shimmering pool amid the cool oasis of your love. Okay, a lot of imagery about water in here. But none of the words on the ends rhyme, do they? No. Now we have a form to the poem. There's rhythm. There's beats. But no rhyme. But that's fine. The poetry of the Bible doesn't rhyme. There's a lot of poetry that does not rhyme that can speak to people deeply. So let's look at the next one. Oh, you like... Okay, Jocelyn, you like poetry that does not rhyme better? Okay. Cool. We'll take a vote in a little bit to who likes rhyming poetry over non-rhyming. Okay. Let's let's go on, and then we'll do some other stuff. Okay. All right. Here we go. This is an excerpt, which means a part of the beginning of the poem I wrote called "Water Is a Living Thing." So here we go. Water is a living thing, a necessary brook or spring, all its fountains, life and living, ever moving ever giving so if look up here guys okay this is this is not your turn to talk please pay eyes on the board okay and after we go over this then we're going to break up into small groups and have some fun okay all right so notice that thing and spring rhyme the ing part and one of the really easy secrets of rhyming is to, you just replace the first, the initial sound or the first letter or two, and you have the last part of the words the same. So spring, thing and spring rhyme. And then if you'll notice, living and giving also rhyme. They rhyme in both syllables. You don't have to do that. In poetry, to make it rhyme, it's just the last syllable or the last beat. 
So who has questions? Oh yes, definitely. I will read the rest of the poem to you guys. It's quite long. There's many more couplets. They're actually in couplets because couplet is two line like a couple. And so we'll talk about couplets and different forms of stanzas and things like that. We'll talk about so much. We're going to have so much fun. And then we're going to publish a class book of poetry yeah, and share it with the school and the world. Okay. Thank you. And we'll let's, we're going to break up into small groups now.